Hi, this is Leslie. Welcome back to Will and Our Arts. Today we're diving into a post-apocalyptic world of Fallout. It's created diamond inspired by the new TV series and video games. The series incorporates elements of dark humor, futuristic aesthetics, with a 1950s inspiring setting. But don't worry if you're not a Fallout fan, just think of this as a retro 1950s kitchen. Let's get started. The main thing I want to focus on is the Fallout shelter, primarily the kitchen. This is going to be a currently lived-in kitchen, like in the show. The kitchen itself does not have any robotic features. It is truly a 1950s vibe, turquoise, everything. It is so fun and so cool. I'm going to design all my furniture on the computer, and then I'm going to cut it out using my laser cutter. I am just going to go with cardboard. I have cardboard galore. Let's recycle. Anybody could do this. If you have an X-Acto knife and some cardboard, you can make your own kitchen furniture of any sort. I am gonna start with making the stove. I already cut out the pieces that I designed. This is the basic, and then I'm gonna also use cereal boxes to add a little bit more dimension. This is not gonna be a stove where the doors open or the oven opens. We need our cardboard pieces. We need some glue. I'm gonna use some hot glue. This is 1 12th scale or approximately 1 12th scale. Cut out my basic shapes. This is the back, back of the stove, sides of the stove line everything up this is the burner area now we have a basic stove and i'm going to add details with using the cereal boxes to add doors in we'll use some trash plastic to make window here in the oven so first we're just going to make all our basic furniture and then we're going to go ahead and add the details so we're going to get our basic furniture going any exposed area like this i'll add the spackle so let's go ahead and get our refrigerator started let's try it just straight on hot glue So we have our basic stove, our basic refrigerator. When I designed these, I just designed these in my silhouette program in 2D. I'm used to making signs, so my brain thinks in 2D. Next, I wanna make some cabinets, the lower cabinets. Made space for the toe kicker that I'll add in later. So next, what I wanna do with the stove and the fridge is use my spackle. And I'm just gonna fill in some of these cracks, smooth out. This area is gonna get a cereal box to line the top, so we're not gonna see this part. So we have a nice coat of spackling, and I gave it a good sanding. So we're gonna have a fridge, a stove. There's gonna be a counter here with a shelf. This is gonna be about here, and we're gonna have another counter here. So next I am using basically chipboard. It, you can use cereal boxes. This happens to be a Cheez-It box. And this is gonna add some dimension since they're fake drawers. Did a scoring on a corrugated cardboard and then I cut these out of the Cheez-It box. And then we're going to glue them on top so they give a little bit more dimension. And I did that to a bunch of different areas. I actually like the Cheez-It box. It's a little bit less flimsy than a cereal box. So keep that in mind when you're saving your boxes. A Cheez-It box is a great box. That is looking good. So next I want to add speckling and sand, anything that needs to be sanded. These are buttons for the stove. Those buttons are gonna end up on this section right here. These are my stovetop burner. Now let's give these all a couple more coats and then we'll start assembling the stove. This is a Pringles lid container. It's some good old trash plastic, as Queen City Minis likes to say. If you don't follow Queen City Minis yet, go follow her. She has so many tips of how to make things. I'm gonna take this. I wanna take that little oven wrap and glue it in here. Let the glue dry and then we'll touch up any areas that need to be touched up paint wise. Next, I'm just gonna paint some of these, the cabinets. This is the dishwasher cabinets. 
It's been a few days. So I decided to reference back to the Fallout TV series on Amazon and decided to revamp my upper cabinets. The first look I had, I didn't get the best references. So I'm going to redo my upper cabinet because I made it, I made the cabinets a little too big. And the other thing I want to do is this is the dishwasher area. I decided to shorten that area as well a little bit just for diorama purposes. I believe there's one more cupboard over here but I want to shorten it a little bit because it was just a little too big for what I'm working with. So I made another sink countertop. One thing about me is I'm not a math person. I'm a visual person. I might get some basic math going, but then if it doesn't work out, I kind of nudge things around a little bit until I get it. It's not the best way to work, but it's the way I work. That's another great thing about cardboard. You can just cut as much as you need. It's a little too overhanging. Okay, I gotta take off not even an eighth, sixteenth maybe here, add an eighth there. I think that's gonna work out great for us. Next, I wanna put together these upper cabinets. In the diorama, it's gonna have a little bit of a slant to it. So we'll work those pieces out as needed. And we're also gonna add a light in here. This is a little side cabinet. This cabinet's gonna be approximately in this zone. The next step will be to add speckling sand and then give everything a coat of this lovely turquoise paint. So I'm gonna do that. All sanded or sanded enough. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and give everything a nice coat of turquoise where it needs to be. And this will also let us know if we need to do more coats of speckle. We are brainstorming this area of the light fixture. I like the idea of this plastic because of its, it's more opaque, but it's just too rigid. My next idea, this is a piece of to-go box and I'm just gonna give it a rough sanding because I want it to, I don't want it to be a clear light. I want it to be more opaque. So get some parchment in here. We're still gonna get, it's still gonna get light through it once I put lights in there. I knew that from my never ending story mirror gate scene, that light is really nice through the parchment. Combination of the two. I think we're gonna get the look we're going for. Okay. I wanted it a little shorter than what I did, so I'm gonna fill in the gaps, glue this in place, and that's gonna give us the vibe of that light. So I apologize to my friends who are waiting for a new video of mine to come out. I like to make projects that take a little bit of time, things that have like multiple steps to them, and I don't necessarily want to split them up in multiple videos. So let me know what you think. I try to get a video out every two weeks, but sometimes life happens, you like quick videos, or like I said, I like to do projects that have multiple steps to them and are kind of more, they're not usually quick projects. So let me know your thoughts and if it's okay if I'm taking a little bit longer on some projects than others. See if we can get one in there. How does it work? I don't know, it sprays water around. Maybe that's how it works. Add some, this is plastic, so I'm just adding some of my silver paint. But this one, I purposely wanna add some more glue, might even add a little bit of white to it. That will dry and look like there's some soap on it. So we have a dishwasher. Why the furniture is drying from a paint job. Let's talk about the base. I have my base, this is the floor. We have a back wall, side wall, and then I'm gonna do a half wall here. So I'm going for the show vibe. If you're not a Fallout fan, just think 1950s retro kitchen, heavily turquoise color. Floor is gonna be checkered. Two of the walls are gonna be tiled white. And then we're gonna have a right wall, which is my little half wall. So for the right wall, if you watch the show, you'll see in the fallout shelters everything is that retro vibe 
and the walls tend to have this really cool, interesting, maybe textured wallpaper. So I had this in my scrapbooking materials. It's cardstock. It has this nice, cool, sparkly, raised texture here. I'm not going to leave it this black. It's going to go ahead and be the turquoise like everything else. All these pieces need a white coat to begin with. So I want the walls to have more of a tile appearance. So I'm just kind of making my score marks a little deeper here. Also a little trick, when you're painting corrugated cardboard, if you go one direction, you're gonna bring out the bumpy corrugatedness more so than if you go a different direction. I'm not too worried about hiding it completely. So let's go ahead and give this guy a coat of the turquoise. Oops, bloppy. All right, we'll let that dry, but see, we still get the, the texture. We wanna seal it. This is the floor. I'm not worried about it being not fully opaque with the white. I also like the idea of it's being a little grungy, a little used, it is a floor. All right, we're gonna add a coat of just basic matte Mod Podge. The best way to keep stripes from bleeding, checkers from bleeding is seal the edges. Hey, 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 oh. Yeah. I'm going to glue the walls together. I'm going to do super gloss on the floor and the back tile. I just want some texture to the top of this, starting with a little bit of gray. I want it to look like, like a laminate counter. Little trash plastic. This is just a toy that my son had. It was a kit to put together. It's kind of junky, but it has all these cool pieces. So I'm going to repurpose the pieces. So I want to work on some details for this dishwasher cabinet countertop area in here. And I need to add some lettering here. I tried a variety of fonts to come up with some letter that I could actually cut out. And this is what I ended up with. This is just a teeny, barely visible clock. So I'm just gonna put a little blob of hot glue on it to give it some dimension. And then I'm gonna cut that out once the hot glue dries. A little shine. All right, friends, we are making a little wash. This is brown with a tint of yellow wash. I don't want everything so stark white because this place has been lived in, I don't know, 200 years. Light discoloring. Let's start installing the kitchen. We're just gonna go with a couple little dollops of hot glue. Yeah. I added a ceiling in silver to give it that underground steel or whatever it is kind of look. And then I just added a little bit of trim on the side. My next goal is to make a kitchen table and kitchen chairs. This is the table I want. This kind of like oblong circle type of thing. My goal is to make those 50 style chairs and I've got the shapes I believe I want. I'm just gonna do two chairs at the table using this aluminum wire. We got our chairs and we got our table. I 
I have all kinds of bits of Super Sculpey that's just like little random bits here and there. So I just took some of the random bits and I flattened it out at the highest thickness I could get. And so I have some more of these cutouts of the cushion. So I'm just going to, best of my ability, I'm gonna kind of trace this. Stick it on my chair. So we have a basic table. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the side silver. We've got our chairs. Pretty good. Those chairs are gonna be painted a yellowish brown color. In the show, basically the first episode of this series, they do a lot of close-ups of the turquoise kitchen I'm referencing. There is a scene where there's this bowl of apples on the counter. Now, I'm not sure how they're getting their apples. Who knows? We're not gonna ask questions. There's apples in a bowl and it's a two-tiered bowl. I made myself a little character. We'll call her Fallout Leslie. So she's approximately 112 scale, maybe a little shorter, but so am I. And I wanna make her some apples. They can be a variety of sizes and colors. Making myself a little sponge. We got the idea of a two-tier bowl. Maybe it's a little handmade, but that's okay. We get the idea of a toaster. We'll make it look like a cord coming out. We just need to paint it. I think that's a pretty good teapot. We have a teeny bottle of Comet. Now I have little miniature jello molds. Right in there, stir. These guys are so cute. I'm gonna make a couple different options to see what I like better. Put those aside. Three minutes, starting now. Oh my God, this one. This one has the indentation. So I have these other platter molds that I wanna use, but for this, I have to inject the UV resin in. Well, clear and clear, really hard to see. So I have this little platter and I'm going to stick one of the jello molds in it and then we're gonna layer a little guy on top. I have all these like little teeny fruit things. Let's start on painting some of these things. Something I got online, it had a bag of flour on it, but that doesn't make sense in this scene, although they had apples, but, and there's canned goods. But if you're living at a fallout shelter for 200 years or whatnot, maybe you have chickens, I don't know, but I don't feel like you would have prepackaged goods. I don't know. But I do like the fact that there's like a little biscuit here. The batter looks a little bit weird. I think I might just add some flour on here. Flour, make it like these biscuits were just cooked, so. Take some bacon soda and we'll pretend that's flour. I'm gonna take some off-white paint here, antique paint, and just kind of tone this down here. I'm okay with the eggs popping out, but not everything being so yellow. So now let's take some of that flour, cause I don't know about you, when I bake, we have flour and everything everywhere.
Let's add a little Leslie for fun. I hope you enjoyed my 1950s retro follow inspired kitchen. Let me know if you can think of any other scenes maybe in Fallout or any other type of video game or any series that you would like me to make a cardboard diorama of. This was a blast. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. We'll see you next time.